Do you guys want to know what is better for the facelifted Land Cruiser 70 Series? Is it the four cylinder or is it the eight cylinder? Well, we have spent two weeks driving both of these cars and we're gonna tell you which one is better in today's video, aren't we, Jacob? Oh yeah. Okay, so to properly compare the four cylinder versus the V8, we're gonna consider a few key areas in today's video. Firstly, we're gonna talk about performance and also daily driving, including which is better for towing. Then we're gonna talk about reliability of the engine and what has gone wrong. I'll also tell you just how easily it is to tune each drivetrain, but also the differences between them, they're frankly shocking. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on which you should buy, and not like a, uh, I don't know which one. Bullshit answer that some others might give you. I'll tell you specifically what you should buy. The four cylinder with the automatic or the V8 with the manual. What is better? So let's start with outright straight line performance, which we use satellites to measure. Let's talk about outright speed because frankly, this thing is way faster with the four cylinder. We timed it at zero to 100 in 11.19 seconds. And this V8 is so much slower. With the manual, you're looking at a zero to 100 of 14.51 seconds. That's because you can't drive manual. It's hurtful. It's slow though. Let's first talk about power because there is a substantial difference. This year, the four cylinder to 2.8 liter turbo diesel straight from a Hilux that's paired to a six speed torque converter automatic transmission. Very weird for a Land Cruiser 70 series. That puts out 150 kilowatt, 500 newton meters of torque. And if we're being totally honest, it's so much more powerful than this. This is the four and a half liter V8. It is venerable. It's been around for so long, paired to a five speed manual transmission, but it only puts out 151 kilowatt of power and 430 newton meters of torque, way less than the four cylinder. However, and a lot of you will know this, you can tune the snot out of these things. They are underpowered and understressed from factory so that they last forever. Whereas Toyota have had to put in a lot of modifications for the four cylinder to make sure that it can keep up with the giant weight, towing capabilities, payload capabilities of the Land Cruiser 70 series. But of course, not everyone wants to modify their Land Cruiser 70 series because as soon as you start messing with that engine, well, there goes your warranty. So let's talk about daily driving in the Land Cruiser 70 series first. There are fewer, more cumbersome trucks to drive than the V8. The five speed manual is far too short in gearing for first and fifth, meaning that first gear should only be used when off-roading or needing to pull a bloody stump out of the ground. You have to upshift at like 10 kilometers an hour. First gear is so short. Whereas fifth gear is also way too short, which is bad because it is the last gear that you have. Even though they made the fifth gear ratio longer in 2016, it's still revving over 2000 RPM when at 100 kilometers an hour. And that is terrible in two ways. One, being noise and vibration. And two, being fuel economy. I don't think I've ever managed to drive an internal combustion car that actually gets worse fuel economy for me at highway speeds versus around town driving. But because the V8 is revving so hard at highway speeds, it's absolutely drinking fuel. Sure, that can be changed with a new fifth gear ratio or even swapping in a six speed automatic transmission, but a new ratio will cost you $1,200 for the part alone, and the automatic conversion kits, again, just for the parts, at least $13,000. And then again, RIP to your warranty, and there goes your proven reliability. So whereas the four cylinder, Jacob and I managed to sit just under 10 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway, which for a huge truck, that's pretty phenomenal. The four cylinder is also a lot lighter than the V8, and that means a lighter front end and better weight distribution, which makes a remarkable difference for handling. Taking both the four cylinder and the V8 Land Cruiser 70 series up saucy corner back to back, it's just a night and day difference. The four cylinder feels far easier to maneuver around the tight hairpin corners versus that V8. The gearing, it's near perfect for the six speed torque converter automatic in the four cylinder. It shifts smoothly. You never have to worry about it or even think about it. It's just there. And better yet, on the highway sixth gear, it keeps the engine at a far quieter and way more fuel efficient level. 
torque. And don't worry, you can still start the four cylinder in second gear because it has a second start button. And there is even a power mode for those who are towing. And although we didn't tow test the 70 series ourselves, from what we've heard from expert car journalists in the industry, the four cylinder, it tows way more effortlessly than the V8 because it has 16% more torque at 500 Newton meters. And that is considering both the four cylinder and the V8, they have a three and a half ton braked towing capacity. And because the four cylinder is 55 kilograms lighter than the V8, its payload is also better. So yeah, you can carry more stuff. Okay, now let's talk reliability, but I wanna preface this by saying no car is immune from problems. Anyway, let's talk about some of the main issues that the four and a half liter turbo diesel V8 has, well, at least reported by owners. The V8 was first installed in the 70 series way back in 2007, which replaced the outgoing inline six cylinder. Contrary to what some uh, haters have to say, the reality is that Toyota's 4.5 liter V8 is extremely reliable as far as combustion engines go. There are definitely a few issues though. Firstly, the alternator is weirdly placed really low in the engine bay, and that means it's prone to like getting damaged by mud and dust and water weird placement. The starter motor as well also just tends to die <laughs> somewhat frequently. So when it does, it's apparently a pretty major job to replace. The injectors are also quite temperamental. And if you use poor quality diesel, they can fail rather quickly. And oil consumption, particularly on earlier models, you know, back to 2010, well, that can be really high. Now, that might sound like a lot of issues, but honestly, it's really not. For a large engine that literally explodes dinosaurs through thousands of moving parts, it's pretty reliable. Now onto the four cylinder though, which hasn't actually been in the Land Cruiser 70 series. So what we know of it, we know from the Hilux because that's where that engine has been essentially plopped from. The biggest issue with the 2.8 liter turbo diesel four cylinder, well, that's been its DPF or diesel particulate filter. It's supposed to burn off the caught diesel particles every few hundred kilometers. The V8 does the same thing. But the four cylinder, well, it's been notorious for that DPF getting clogged. In fact, there's been a class action lawsuit against Toyota in Australia for those who have been affected by it. However, Toyota have stressed at the local media launch of the new Land Cruiser 70 series that these problems have apparently been addressed and they won't be an issue in the Land Cruiser 70 series though, Time will tell. Early on in the engine's life, back in 2018, it was notorious for a design flaw in the air inlet, and that allowed dust to go past the air filter, and that would put the car into limp mode. It also reportedly drunk oil in the first few thousand kilometers, though apparently over time, they become fine, I don't know. Also another issue is the timing chain, which take this with a grain of salt. I've read from some owners online that they've had to replace their timing chains up to four times in just five years, but this seems to be a random issue, and some owners actually actually do a timing chain upgrade just to be safe. But of course, you need to remember the Land Cruiser 70 series, at least in its dual cab 79 form, is actually 500 kilograms heavier than a equivalent dual cab Hilux. And considering the GVM or gross vehicle mass is also around 500 kilograms more than a Hilux, Toyota have actually had to make some pretty major upgrades to the four cylinder drivetrain. And if you wanna learn more about the upgrades to the four cylinder, I've linked our video review down below, and that goes in depth into everything they've done. Suffice to say, mechanically, speaking, you could argue the V8 is just more reliable simply due to its lack of engine problems. But honestly, both are known to be very reliable. Let me know in the comment section though, which do you think is more reliable, the four cylinder or the eight cylinder? I think that will be a very interesting argument. But Matt, I hear you cry, sure, the four cylinder is better in every way, but what about when you tune them? Well, you're not wrong. This is where the V8 wins hands down. A stage one tune, which is essentially just a simple ECU reflash, to get you about 133 kilowatt and 580 newton meters of torque at the wheels on a four cylinder Hilux. Now that's pretty modest gains of 8% in power and 16% in torque. But when we compare that to a stage one tune Land Cruiser 70 series with the V8, you're looking at a modest power bump to 131 kilowatt at the wheels, but the torque jump is insane. 53 newton meters at the wheels. That's no joke. So that bump is 13% to power and a crazy 54% increase in torque. And that is simply reflashing the ECU. And trust me, there is so much more headroom. You see people who have done just a few simple mods to their Land Cruiser 70 series, and they're pushing a thousand newton meters of torque. It's insane. And that's with the V8. You're not gonna be able to do that with the four cylinder. It's just smaller engine. There's only so much you can do, so much boost you can pump through the turbo to be able to bump 
bump up the power and torque. It just doesn't have the capabilities of the V8. And do you really think that Toyota don't know that their V8 is totally underpowered? Of course they do. But when you buy the V8, you're buying something that is so unstressed that it makes the engine's mechanicals extremely reliable. And that brings me to my final thoughts. And which one should you buy? So let's get out of here and I'll tell you exactly which one you should get. So what are our final thoughts on the V8 versus the four cylinder? Well, I'll put it this way. If you are the kind of person that wants to get the absolute most out of your car, you don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars modifying it, the four cylinder is the way to go. It's better in every single metric straight out of the box. It's easier to live with. It really does just the same as the V8. In fact, a little bit more because it just has more torque out of the box. And in terms of reliability, they're both very similar. And at the end of the day, yes, they both have their problems, but as far as engines goes, internal combustion engines, they're pretty damn reliable. However, if you are a Land Cruiser purist, and that means that you do not see this as the final form of the Land Cruiser, this is simply a shell and you have a lot of work to do to it. In terms of engine tuning, exhaust, track width, suspension, interior, then you are definitely definitely going to want to get the V8. You can do so much more with this engine. It has so much untapped potential because Toyota want to be as conservative as possible. They want to sell you something like this that they know will last forever because it's so under tuned. This has to be the most understressed engine in the world. And what you can get out of it is pretty damn phenomenal. So there are two camps. One, you don't want to do anything to your car. Definitely get the four cylinder. Two, you want to do a lot to your car. You're going to want the V8. But you can let me know what you guys think down in the comment section just below that like button. Tell me if you like this comparison, a bit of a different one, but I really enjoyed making it. And let me know which one you would get. Would you get the V8 or would you get the four cylinder? All right. Alrighty, ciao for now.